Greetings, everyone. Uh, we will be starting the session now. Uh, I'm just putting this slide deck on the screen. Just give me a few seconds. Thank you. I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes, thank you. Welcome, Professor Paul. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Um, can you hear me okay, first of all? Can someone either text or reply? Yeah, all fine. Excellent, excellent. Um, we all good. wanted to take a few minutes just to, not even a few minutes, 60 seconds. One, to greet you and thank you for um, attending this workshop. Um, the Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone is one of the most active uh, across Africa. We work with very closely with FIP across um, Africa and multiple other regions as well. And it's wonderful to know. Uh, and I'm a pharmacist myself as well. Um, and I've worked in many African countries, uh, including with WHO and uh, Global Fund. And it's great to see the, the kind of activity and interest that we see in Sierra Leone. So thank you for your interest. And I give the floor back to Sonia to moderate with the rest. And we've got some great speakers today. So thank you. Thank you, Prof, for your uh, valuable words to the participants. And now I would like to introduce a moderator for today's session, Mr. Yusuf Mara. Uh, Yusuf, if you can just take the floor and introduce the speakers and take in the webinar to the next level. Thank you. Okay. Hello, greetings, everyone. So I am Yusuf Ma. Um, I'm a registered pharmacist in Sierra Leone. And I've been working with the Directorate of Pharmaceutical Services for over two years now. And currently I'm acting as in the capacity of the policy and planning management officer at the Directorate of Musical Services. And for today's session, we'll be having some great speakers to opine on our topic for the day, career development in health supply chain, gaps and future prospects. So before we start, let's um, discuss on housekeeping rules for our participants. So we are kindly pleading for all participants to meet um, your mic and turn off your video when necessary. And please ask questions using chat box and raising your hand, you will see the icon there. And also, please participate in the pool that will open um, within the next few seconds. So we know more about your interest. And the webinar recordings will, will be available in Empower School of Health YouTube channels. And also, obviously, this uh, session is being live streamed on Facebook right now. And of, obviously, slide deck will be shared with all participants. And please participate in all polls to better engage with us. And also, please turn on your camera for a better engagement, if you can. And please mute your microphone when the other speaker is speaking, so as to avoid interference. So please adhere to the webinar schedule timings. So we're going to the session proper. So the main objective for this webinar is to deliver and explain the overview on the topic, career development in health supply chain, gaps and future prospects. So in the next few seconds, the first pool will be open so as to engage with you more. Um, this poll will focus more on our background to so know more about the background of our participants. And we encourage everyone to participate. And obviously, the poll will close in the next five minutes. 
And for our first session today, our first speaker is Dr. Amara Bangali Sise. Dr. Amara Bangali Sise is a pharmacist with long years of experience in health supply chain systems management, with expertise in health system strengthening, with key emphasis on supply chain management and emergency response. He has been working in the health supply chain um, sector as a consultant for UNICEF. Please welcome our speaker, Dr. Amar Bangalisise, who is going to be sharing his experience on online postgraduate diploma in global health procurement and supply chain management, 12 months course. Over to you, Dr. Amar Bangalisise. Thank you very much, um, <clears throat> moderator Francis Joseph, um, for this great opportunity. And I also want to thank our uh, members who have um, made time to join the webinar. Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone is very grateful, and we are even more grateful um, for our engagement and 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 work, our collaboration with Empower School of Health in providing not only the webinar but also um, capacity building opportunities for members of the Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone. Having said that, um, I want to um, also mention that I have the opportunity to pursue the postgraduate diploma in in global health procurement and supply chain management, and with with Empower. A very exciting <laughs> program and a very good opportunity that um, I would suggest and advise um, people with interest in supply chain management to also um, participate or uh, enroll. Um, so, Sonia, are we doing the poll now or I go ahead? With no, the no, later, now. later. You just carry on, Amara. Okay, because the poll is showing on my screen. I, I don't know. Go ahead with the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, the from from the Society of Sierra Leone has um, an MOU with with Empower, which which um, has been a long standing for about two years now, where we will provide exchanges in terms of experience sharing. Web conducting webinars is is one of the experience sharing sharing engagement we have with with Empower, and also um, to have our members also enroll into the postgraduate diploma program um, for for global health procurement and supply chain management. So we have about 12 members in total that are currently pursuing um, this program. So of course, um, this we, we are pursuing payments together as a team. It is mostly done um, by, by bank transfer. It's only after payments, at least of the first set of, of, of fees, then you have um, a registration link for you to register and have a page. Um, a login page within the Empower platform, then you can proceed um, with, with the course. It is actually a 12 month course that is self-paced and you you go along with the course based on your, your timing, but as much as possible, you try to finish the whole of the program within 12 months. There are nine modules um, in, in total with three extra modules. The one that has to do with um, the course module, that is a welcome module as well. And a final one, that is the case study. And uh, I'm happy to mention that I'm already in, in module eight, which is the very second to last one. And I hope to finish that um, within 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 this year, 2022. And um, so uh, to be very honest, my background as a pharmacist gave me I, I, I'm sure it gives me an edge in understanding the modules um, for the postgraduate diploma in supply chain management, especially with the very first set of modules that, that are there. So it um, basically speaks to, to pharmaceuticals and pharmacy related um, things in supply chain management. But also, even if you are not a pharmacist, you also have the opportunity to also understand that. For example, um, candidates who also have health background, probably public health or laboratory sciences, as the case may be, you also have an experience in also understanding the, 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 the course modules, especially in the, in the, in the, in the beginning. Um, so the modules, like I mentioned before, are very um, interesting and they are definitely um, of all the modules that I've been through, two of them captured my interest most. Um, those are the um, global health procurements and the inventory management. Um, so it gives you the opportunities to, bright, to, to widen your 
horizon or your thinking ability in terms of global health procurement for supplies for, for, for health commodities. I mean, it's it's relates the differences between procuring health commodities and that of the or, re, or any other regular commod, commodity out there. So, I mean, that's interesting mix between those and the differences between those two kinds of procurements. I mean, captured my attention as well, and especially with inventory management. Um, for the inventory management, it's not only it does not only speaks about moving items and keeping them here and there, and also documenting as they move, but also they are very critical and very exciting calculations to ensure you keep your stock at a specific level to 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 make sure there is a balance between what you keep and 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 going um into loss in, in for keeping too much of inventory and running into in, into loss so all that i mean that that mix is very interesting for me i found it very very exciting as well and and also the approximately seven chapters in in every of the modules and for every chap for every chapter there's an assessment at the end of it and there's also an, an assessment at the end of the modules and also very important to talk about is the reference materials and the links to many books to publications institution, institutional books NGO and, and ingo experiences in the field i mean it's 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 widening your it's broadening your your thinking ability beyond just what you do in your small corner yeah it's it's also it also looks at publications in different areas in different ways of practice just experiences from 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 um un un institutions WHO, unicef and other very key in, international institutions that works in supply chain management for example the msh and and as the as the case may be so i mean once you have these materials with you there's an opportunity for you to download those materials you could keep them i mean anywhere you want to keep them you can always refer to them as and when you want there are links also that will take you directly to those resources online so it's, it's very interesting and captivating something you will never regret participating in and then all said and done the expectation at the end of the of every module or for every slide that is there in this in this program is to ensure that you understand every chapter and you you are able to pass every exams i mean because the the assessments that are there are there to test your knowledge for the chapter that you have completed yeah so um there is no facility to to jump to 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 a next chapter without you completing the one that you are pursuing currently so it is very structured very controlled as well so like i mentioned it's 12 months and it, it's self-paced the slides are very interesting and we currently have a total of 12 people that are participating in it so i encourage every one of you who has interest in building a career and supply chain management to try the program diploma and see how you can benefit as much as possible so these are my experiences with that. So I thank you very much. And I hope more people will have the, the zeal and, and to join the Empower Postgraduate Diploma. Thank program. you very much, Dr. Amar. Thank you very much, Dr. Amar Bangani for such a presentation. I guess um, participants have had a brief insight into how the Postgraduate Diploma course is designed. So our next presenter will be from Empower, Sonia, who will give us um, a much in-depth insight into the Empower School of Health. Over to you, Sonia. Thank you, Yusuf, and thank you, Dr. Amara, for your uh, experience uh, since you are doing our PG PGD uh, course, which is for 12 months, and it's really good to know. And along with uh, Dr. Amara, there are others, uh, candidate also who have started the PGD course along with him and they are also very much uh, uh, impressed with the course content and everything and if you have any question related to the PGD course you can get connected with uh, us uh, the email ID is mentioned on the chat box so now I briefly and quickly uh, describe you all about Empower School of Health uh, what we do uh, in what areas just brief information about it. So Empower School of Health is a capacity building organization and we have worked over 100 countries across multiple languages uh, to strengthen the institutional and HR capacity of global health and human humanitarian programs through digital learning interventions. Uh, we have uh, uh, 
almost uh, developed and delivered nearly 1 million hours of capacity building content to nearly 200,000 public health professionals. Uh, we have uh, majorly three focus area, uh, leadership and change management, digital learning, public health procurement and supply chain. As you can see on the bottom, these are the five domain areas where we are working. Um, we have worked uh, global health leadership, global health supply chain, COVID, HIV, TB, malaria, nutrition, MCH, AMR, etc. New product introduction, uh, medical lab diagnostic training, health workforce strengthening um, for uh, healthcare professionals. Uh, now moving on to next slides, you can see these are the partnership we have built with other institutions, associations and universities as of today. Uh, Pharmaceutical Society is uh, also our partner and we have partnered almost a year back. After that, we have uh, delivered many webinars together. Uh, we are able to uh, train uh, pharmacy uh, professionals uh, with our PGD course. And since we have recently launched the master's course, so we are receiving a very good interest from participants for master's course also. Uh, that will be described to you uh, in, in next few slides. Uh, also, uh, you, you can see on this slides, uh, this slide is basically this slide basically uh, showing you our partners, clients, and funders. Uh, we have worked with government bodies, UN agencies, donor agencies, academia, professional associations. Uh, this slide is uh, including our advisors and faculty uh, members, Professor Paul Lalwani, uh, who have just speaked uh, on few points just few minutes before. Professor Andy is our uh, one of our presenter and speaker for today with huge uh, experience and knowledge. Uh, then on this slide, you can see uh, there are many other courses who have been included uh, for exact uh, exact information on the courses, how much co how many courses and in what areas we deliver. You can visit our website and website link is posted on the chat. Uh, as explained to you recently, we have uh, launched master's course. Uh, the master's course. Uh, over here, it is mistakenly written 24 months, 24 months, but we have two categories under master course. That is one for 12 month course. That is only for PGD graduates from Empower School of Health and 24 month master's course uh, for all. And uh, these courses are uh, currently available in two languages, English and French. Please visit our website for more information or you can get connected with us. Uh, so, uh, on this webinar, I'm privileged to announce the master course uh, for 12 month and 24 month master course. As you can see uh, on the uh, on the slides, the fee structure is mentioned, uh, but this is the upfront fee. We have many. We have a partial scholarship for deserving candidates, where we will reduce uh, the uh, upfront fee, and for that and to know how to apply for the scholarship program, you can either get connected with uh, Amara, uh, Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone, or you can get connected with on the email ID that is mentioned on the chat box. These slides will be shared with you all. So uh, you will be having information. And anyways, you can get uh, check everything uh, related to the course on our website. Uh, as explained to you, the process for applying for a partial scholarship, uh, you can simply get connected with just, just yeah. So you can write to us. You can ask any questions you have related to any of the courses. We have masters, we have PGD, and we have short courses also. Uh, the email ID is, is mentioned over here, or you can get connected with uh, Pharmaceutical Society Sierra Leone. Uh, selected applicant will be informed on the application and registration process uh, for uh, course details. Uh, this is this link is for postgraduate diploma. Once you go to the all courses, you will be able to see all courses that we offered. Uh, now I would like to um, give a floor back to Yusuf. Uh, thank you all. Thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you very much for such a brief and in-depth presentation. So moving on now to our next presenter, Dr. Augustine Bremer. So Dr. Augustine Bremer is an experienced pharmacist with a demonstrated history of working in the primary healthcare setting, the secondary and tertiary hospitals and other sectors in the healthcare industry. 
is a skill in supply chain management and served as a district pharmacist, a vaccine center coordinator, and also as a consultant to UNICEF during the Ebola outbreak. He is an alumni of the College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences, with a doctor of pharmacy degree also from the University of Unibin, Nigeria, and currently working as a quality assurance manager National Medical Supplies Agency, Sierra Please welcome our next speaker, Dr. Augustin Puenna. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Pharmacist Yusuf. Thank you very much. Um, as he rightly said, I'm Dr. Augustin S. I'm a pharmacist. And I must thank um, um, the Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone and the Empower School of Health for giving me this platform to share my experience of supply chain management, especially in Sierra Leone. Next slide, please. So I want to quickly jump into my presentation. And of course, we all are aware that for a health system to function properly, it depends on the continuous flow of drugs and medical supplies. That is the healthcare supply chain system. And uh, of course, um, in Sierra Leone, um, despite the increased investment that have been made in order to access quality drugs and supplies, there still remain a big challenge. So um, for the perspective of Sierra Leone, over the past decade, several interventions have been made and with substantial investment in order to improve on the availability of essential commodities across the health facilities. Next slide, please. Next slide. So what were the focus? Where was this um, intervention focused? It was focused on developing the policy, reviewing and implementation, um, also fostering effective collaborations between stakeholders and also improving efficiencies and transparency in the supply chain. And a lot of investment was also made on um, human resources, infrastructure, building new health facilities, also on um, ICT infrastructure and also transportation. Um, next slide, please. So despite this um, huge investment, there still remain to be um, accessibility problem leading to stockouts. And with all these stockout issues, we continuously destroy um, dispose of um, health commodities in the facilities. So I want us to think, why is that so? We continuously have um, stockout issues, but at the same time, we destroy commodities. Next slide. Please, next slide, please. So while we are thinking about the, the, the reasons why we continuously have stockouts, and also why we continuously dispose of huge quantities of health commodities, I want to take this opportunity to, to tell you about the evolutions that have taken place within the supply chain system in Sierra Leone. So um, from the last um, decade, you know, the supply chain system in Sierra Leone has undergone um, certain evolutions. So since 2010, we had the Directorate of Drugs and Medical Supplies. And during 2012, the Directorate of Medical Supplies, um, the supply chain aspect arm of the Directorate of Drugs and Medical Supplies um, was shifted to um, the National Pharmaceutical Procurement Unit. And the Pharmaceutical Procurement Unit was an autonomous agency. Then from 2012, the Pharmaceutical Procurement and um, pharmaceutical, the National Pharmaceutical Procurement Unit was dissolved in 2016. And then we have um, the National Medical Supplies Agency in 2017, where I work as the quality assurance manager. Next slide, please. So, what are the roles and responsibility of the National Medical Supplies Agency? So, the National Medical Supplies Agency participates in quantification of drugs and one of the key roles of the agency also is to do procurement of drugs and medical supplies. Next slide. Next slide, please. Hello, Yusuf, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, next, next slide, please. 
Dr. Augustine, can you uh, see the screen? Because I'm moving the slides. Yeah. I can't see the screen. OK. Are you OK now, Dr. Augustine? No. OK, let me just reshare it again. So, OK. Can you see now? I think I can use my, okay, okay yes, thank you very much. So um, warehousing and operation is another key role for the National Medical Supplies Agency. So despite the fact that the National Medical Supplies Agency do not buy for all um, um, other programs, but yet we store all programmatic products, including the free care products, and also we distribute to all the health facilities across the county using our set standards. We have um, document and standard operating procedures that we follow, and we have our inventory management system that is both the hard copy and the software electronic system, which we use to do our distribution. Next slide, please. Next slide. I still have difficulties. Okay, I'll be using my slide. I will be using my slide. Can the other participants see the slides while I use my own slide? Can I use my slide? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yes, please do. Okay, so next, I want to share the supply chain institutions in Sierra Leone. So we have the Directorate of Drugs and Medical Supplies, which is now the Directorate of Pharmaceutical Services, that has the oversight role for all supply chain activities in county. And their key function is um, to do quantification of healthcare commodities. Next is the National Medical Supplies Agency. Of course, the key function is procurement, warehousing, and distribution, as I rightly said in my past, in my last slide. And we have the Directorate of um, Policy Planning and Information, and their role is on data management. Of course, we also have the Pharmacy Board, whose role is basically um, um, regulatory, and we do have the programmatic. Um, we have the programs also that support the quantification of products for their programs. And we have the second layer, which is the district health management team that functions also in order to quantify their products and make requests for their health facilities. Let me see if this is on. Okay, next slide. I can see. It. So sources of staffing for the National Medical Supplies Agency. So the National Medical Supplies Agency um, benefits from staffing needs um, from the agency direct recruitment, also from direct transfer from the Directorate of Pharmaceutical Services, and also from Directorate of Stores and Inventory Control Management. However, all these institutions are government-owned institutions. So um, in May 2022, we, we um, used a diagnostic tool, which is human resource for supply chain management, just to um, assess our supply chain maturity in terms of staffing. And we all know the people that deliver um, theory of change, the people that deliver develop that um, particular human resource supply chain management tool in order to um, build on human resource for supply chain management, analyze the conditions needed to ensure that workers at every level in the supply chain perform optimally. So um, the, there are four pathways in that particular tool that we, we diagnosed, that is staffing, the skills, working conditions, motivation of staff, and we um, the people at Deliver talk that if we address all these areas, 
you know, then we can have effective delivery um, of health services and we will have um, improved health outcome. So based on the results from the tool that was administered, we realized that um, staffing scored high. Um, we can see the composite um, rates in bold. So we have 80, 80 from both um, the management and the non-management. So the, the staffing, we are separated into the managerial level and the non-managerial level. So we are placed in different rooms. So people scored differently based on what they think. And we realized that skills score um, less on the managerial part. We had 45 score and also next to it was um, next to it was um, working condition that scored 47. Next slide. So the finding from this skill scored low, and this is synonymous to um, what um, Honestan um, Honestan discovered as well in his paper in his literature review that in some countries the CMS is a government department. The CMS is a government um, department or a part of the Ministry of Health, and this provides limited flexibility for the CMS to hire people with supply chain experience and skills because of the poor wages and incentive system in the public sector. However, they also often lack the authority to remove incompetent staff. So if staff are transferred, it's difficult to remove them. You have to undergo the, you go to the, um, the government structure to remove staff. So skill, is a challenge in the health supply chain system. So this is synonymous to other studies that was done. Next slide. So I tried to um, share some studies that also speak to the fact that um, yeah, most of the supply chain issues are due to unskilled um, personnel. So um, in Uganda as well, um, Kalangwa Albert in 2022 in his paper, Why Stock Out and Expiration of Medicine Occur, also attests to the fact that it's due to unskilled personnel. Similar study was also done in Norway by some, and it also um, speaks to the fact that unskilled per um, um, personnel poses a major challenge in health supply chain management. And two other studies also in Ghana, and also another study was done um, by Pivet in 2014 that speak to unskilled personnel as key issues in supply chain management. Next slide. So the gaps in supply chain. So. In July 2020, um, Jeffrey C. Sanderos um, did a brief analysis of the free healthcare program that started in 2010, just to see, um, to assess the free healthcare system. What are his findings? All of his findings were um, linked to skilled personnel. The first one was key functions not adequately filled. According to his finding, he said key functions in the supply chain were not adequately filled. And the second was um, staff do not um, generally possess the skills and tools required to fulfill um, the supply chain functions and tasks. Next to it, he said um, the supply chain actors need support to capacity building to address unique skills required for an effective supply chain. So supply chain staff need specific capacity building in order to address skill, skill sets in order to perform well in their tasks. And lastly, he said, um, NMSC, um, DDMS now, the DPS, now called DPS, and others to be successful, government and um, um, Ministry of Health and Sanitation and donor partners need to um, provide more consistent, reliable, and coordinated support for supply chain operations and personnel. These are all the gaps, mostly scale. Next slide. Next slide, please.
Thank you. Um, future prospects. So what are the future prospects in the healthcare? So um, healthcare industry is rapidly changing as, as effort is put towards simultaneously providing value-based care and staying more efficient. So because um, the most important thing for um, healthcare system is to provide improved services for patients. So also healthcare um, supply chain industry is supposed to come together to meet that particular challenge in order to survive. So there is a gap there as well, and um, um, a future prospect. Then, of course, as um, globally, globally as um, technology improves, we also need to match up to fill in that particular space. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, Dr. Augustine, I'm keep moving. I think you're facing some uh, internet issue. Can you just turn off your camera? Might be you, your speed will be better. Okay. Can you see this slide now? So um, next to so the future prospect. I'll be using my slide. No, I'm using mine now. So um, we talk about expansion of supply chain with personalization. So um, currently in some areas of the world now, people are not um, going to a health facility to seek facility. So healthcare system is coming to the doorstep. So supply chain industry should also move in order to meet that particular standard. You know, supply chain is expanding, especially in infrastructure and transportation. You know, because that is the um, highest priority of the healthcare system in expansion, especially in area where um, accessibility is a problem. So also we should be ready to expand together with the current trend. And of course, as it continues to expand, standardization of patient experiences um, um, comes in. And of course, um, data management and data um, use of data is also of essence. Then, of course, um, supply chain predictability. As we have data, we're supposed to analyze our data in order to keep with the current trend. Then the last two talks about collaboration and communication with clinicians and supply chain industry. So as we continue to manage our supplies, we're supposed to be in very good communication with those that are bringing the supplies to us so that um, we can have the right supplies. And also we need to collaborate with our colleagues, clinicians, you know, so that we can provide what they want, especially in terms of visibility, because um, if they don't know what we have, then we'll continue to have expiries in our store and while they have stock out in their health facilities. And of course, building relationship with, of course, the partners with which we work, it's also of essence. My last slide will be on the concluding thoughts. So with, um, with the advancement of technology, as I rightly said, there's a shift of tax of health supply chain, to also keep up with the changes. And of course, the growth of technology and societal development um, are important in promoting value-based healthcare, while the health industry must also save costs wherever possible. The future of health supply chains can be predicted as these two goals collide. So um, lastly, um, you know, better communication maintains consistency, efficiency, and overall improvement of patient. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Gwen, for that presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Augustine. Uh, Yusuf, I would like to uh, ask my back-end team to launch poll one because we have missed it. Yeah, so participants, I would request you all to please participate in this poll. Uh, this is uh, These questions are just uh, general questions. You just need to uh, select the uh, answer, uh, which is in front of the uh, question. And 
it will be for uh, for few seconds and after that we uh, yusuf will share the results with you all please participate all uh, i would request all participants to please participate in this poll thank you thank you very much sonia so we now move on to our next presenter um dr amar bangal is say yusuf yusuf poll is going on so we will wait for few seconds till the time participants will select their respective okay. answers and then we will share the results of poll and then we will move on to the next speaker noted yeah 46 uh, 50% of the participants have already participated i would request you others to please also do quickly it won't take much time of yours uh, just few seconds uh, as of now 65% of participants right. have participated uh, please i request you all to uh, please select your respective answer and submit your poll basically this poll will give us an idea about our audience for the day and there will be another poll at the end that is just a feedback poll Seventy percent of participants have participated. I would request we will wait till eighty percent, and then we will uh, close the polling. If that could be possible with hundred percent of participation, that will be really appreciated. But thank you. we will wait for few more seconds team please end the poll and show results yusuf over to you please yes we have some seven percent and Okay, thank you, everyone. So this is the results for the short poll just conducted, and we have male participants, sixty-eight percent, female thirty-two percent. Is out of the hundred and forty-eight, and for the age category, we'll we'll see it on our screen. And for the geographical region, we see um, Sierra Leone, twenty-four percent, and we see South Af Southern Africa, thirty-two percent, and we see Central Africa, nine percent, and elsewhere thirty-five percent. Based on our academic background, we see pharmacy technicians, we see sixteen percent. Bachelor of Pharmacy degree, we see thirty-eight percent of the participants, and pharmacy with an advanced degree in any area, we see twenty percent. Pharmacy with PhD, one percent. Non-pharmacy, thirteen percent. Others, thirteen percent. How many years of work experience? Less than five years, we see forty-two percent of our participants. Six to ten years, twenty-eight percent. Eleven to fifteen years, twenty percent. Over fifteen years, ten percent. So we see a huge pool of highly experienced participants. So thank you everyone for this poll. So at the end of At the end of this um, webinar, we'll be giving you the opportunity to participate in the 
next poll. So we'll move on now to our next speaker who has been introduced earlier. Obviously, he is Dr. Amar Bangal Sise, and a pharmacist with long years of experience in health supply chain management with expertise in health system strengthening with key emphasis on supply chain management and emergency response. He has been working over the years as an health supply chain consultant with UNICEF. Please welcome our next speaker once again, Dr. Amar Bangal Sise. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Moderator, and also thank you to my previous speaker, Dr. Augustine Bremer. Um, thank you for the introduction. It is very much in place. Please, um, so now let's proceed with the slide. The next slide, please. Yeah, so my presentation outline would be um, very short and it will go in this in this order that I will do a very brief and short introduction. And I will also talk about health supply chain how it is defined in healthcare yeah and uh, issues relating to health supply chain career development because we are speaking to career development in health supply chain management and what are the efforts to ensure potential improvement in career development health in, in health supply chain what are the prospects that we have lying out there uh, for a career development health supply chain then <clears throat> i'll finally close off with the take home message for my presentation. Um, so regarding the introduction, I would introduce my presentation with two basic but very um, serious quotes from two um, supply chain experts, um, Richard Branson, who once said, a company's employee is its greatest assets and your people are your products. Please let's keep that at the back of our minds. And Stevens also said at some point, the dedicated balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image, but giving them the opportunity to create themselves speaks to mentorship more specifically. Next slide, please. Now, there are many different school of thought when it's going to defining supply chain management in healthcare, in healthcare systems. So as much as possible, I tried to, to, to define supply chain management in my own understanding and in my own view. Of course, it's a very extensive network. I usually refer to it as a sequence of events wherein there are different components and one component relating to the other. Yeah. Wherein the weakest link is as is the strongest link is as weak as the weakest link. Yeah, so it's an extensive network of systems, components, and processes that collectively work to ensure medicines and other supply chains so and other healthcare supplies are manufactured, distributed, distributed, and provided to patients timely. All this is done to do what? To ensure there is efficiency and improve in quality. Yeah, and also optimize other supply chain functions like transportation, warehousing, as the case may be. We have to make sure that whatever functions we do with our supply chain, there is an that there is always at the back of our mind that we need to reduce costs and increase profits as much as possible. This mostly speaks increased efficiency for all supply chain and of course for the private sector, they want to ensure that they get competitive advantage over their competitors. Next slide, please. Now, I want to focus on supply chain career development I mean, to the CLO perspective. What are the current issues that we face? Yeah. And then um, these issues are, I may not really speak specifically only to Sierra Leone. It might also um, speak to other supply chain issues in other parts of the world, but more specifically in, in Africa as a continent. So we have noted that um, <clears throat> up to date, there are no clear policies or guidelines for supply chain system function at any level in the supply chain. For, for the CIO supply chain, we basically have three levels. We have the central level, the district level, and the community level. So for all of these levels, there are no specific policy or document that speaks to how supply chain should be conducted at those levels. And also there is, there is difficulty in recognition of supply chain staff as an expert area. Yeah, so there are no accreditations or um, possible areas of possible things or means of recognition for supply chain staff as an expert area. So lack of investment in health supply chain systems. Of course, this cannot be overemphasized. And the, the, the investment that is put aside by governments and the donors is always not enough to ensure supply chain systems functions optimally. And also there are no recognized academic training institutions for supply chain management. You would see this has been a burning issue, a burning thought for supply chain staff currently within CRU. Next slide, please. 
Now, um, as a continuation of the, the issues, what, what they are, and also the fact that um, there, is, there is this general thinking or assumptions um, amongst everyone that every pharmacy professional is a supply chain, <laughs> is a health supply chain person. I mean, this, this, this cannot be true. Yeah, different people have different interests that they want to build a career on. So if you think that every um, pharmacy professional has a health su supply chain system, then we, we continue to have problems in terms of career development. And also there are very weak infrastructure and lack of government commitment. What you want to see, if there is going to be an overall governance in terms of supply chain issues, then the government and the, and the line ministry should be very much committed to ensure that they provide the necessary governance and they also provide the necessary investment to ensure the structures, the infrastructure that are needed Dr. Mara, please unmute yourself. You muted yourself. Sorry, I did not notice I muted myself. Probably someone muted me during the process. I'm sorry. So I was saying, um, in terms of um, assuming that every pharmacy professional is a supply chain um, person, it's a very, very big mistake. I mean, this has this has really speak to the to the gaps that we have in supply chain sector, yeah, and also weak infrastructure and lack of government commitment. We need the overall governance from governments and the respective line ministries to ensure there is funding allocation, to ensure there is infrastructural investments. So that there are vehicles, there are storage systems, there are there are staffing, and there are institutions that carry out supply chain management activities at every level. So the weak collaboration between public and private sector give it what it's what you want to, yeah. Say it how you want it, but if there are very weak collaboration between private and public institutions, we we'll continue to see a very big gap or weaknesses in the supply chain system. However, I look at it, the public se sector has its own strength and the private sector as well has their own strength. So if we have a very weak collaboration, then we we'll continue to face the issues that we, that we face. And there are no known accreditations available in country. Of course, all university or the tertiary institutions do not provide specific causes or programs that relate to supply chain, to health supply chain system in this country. Next slide, please. Now, what should we do? What do we want to do to improve all of this? Yeah, so now we have looked at the issues and tried as much as possible to identify them as they relate to our, to our setting, which can also reflect other settings in mostly other parts of the world and probably more so in Africa. Yeah, we will need commitment and leadership from central government towards discussing policies and strategies. We can never be able to move forward if we don't have guiding documents, if we don't have these issues embedded in policies, we don't have a strategy to which every donor, every partner, every agency needs to contribute to. Instead of having everything worked haphazardly, every donor and partner have their own vested interest in, in the supply chain system, this strategy would put everybody in the same line where whatever contribution you have would be in line with the strategy. So that would be very much um, um, in, in, the, in the allocation of resources. It would be very, it will be allocated more, there will be better allocation of, of resources, for example. And there are also documents that guide how supply chain system is being conducted in the country. Yeah. So we need that overall or overarching commitment from governance. A health sector commitment to strengthen supply chain system and services to investments and donor attraction. I mean, we need to ensure that in our budget, we, in, we include supply chain system issues. Yeah, issues that will help to strengthen our supply chain system. We need gears, we need equipment, we need warehousing for Christ's sake. We need staffing, we need the staffing, they need training. Whatever it is that we need to do to ensure that we strengthen supply chain system should be the, the way to go. How do we ensure that the tools are available? How do we ensure that what is actually or really needed is being provided and provided timely? How do we ensure that we know our issues as a country and every donor that comes, we tell them this is what we want instead of the donor coming in to say, this is what I have and this is what you should do with it. Yeah, we should we should be able to go above that stage that is donors understand what we are up to and they focus their contribution to what we want as a country. Engagement with academic institutions within and outside of CLON to discuss strategies for developing curriculum for careers in supply chain management. I mean, I already mentioned in my very first introduction and in my very first um, 
presentation that um, as a society, we are um, providing that kind of leverage on Liwe with FIP, with CPA, and now we have an engagement with, with Empower to ensure that we continue to provide curriculum development or career pathways for, for, for our candidates or our, our members who has interest in supply chain management so they can further build that capacity and improve on them. So we continue to engage, we continue to expand. We also look forward to have academic institutions, probably commerce who are training pharmacists or, or, or the Minister of Health and the government to also engage with these institutions to ensure that they provide this platform or the co correct curriculum to ensure we improve on supply chain career development. Next slide, please. Now, we have to continue to ensure that we build stronger relationships between our private and public sectors and leverage on those potential strengths. Definitely, the private sector, they have their own advantages, yeah, and they can provide the services to the public sector to ensure that the supply chain system is, is very effective and efficient. We need to leverage on our strength, give it what, it's, what, what it may. Yeah, the public sector we will have our own strength, and the private sector definitely will have theirs. How do we collaborate? How do we leverage? How do we interface to ensure we build these stronger relationships and in the process providing career development for people with interest in supply chain management? Now we need to promote evidence of benefits for people wishing to work in supply chain management. What do I stand to gain as a benefit if I want to pursue supply chain management as a career? What is there for me to benefit from? You understand? I mean, these are the things that people want to see. These are things that people want to hear he, he, this is this is this is an organogram and this is how you you rise in this institution or this is how you rise within supply chain landscape that will give you more interest that that should be evidence it should be evidence based or have, or have to promote these benefits for people to continue to work we need to continue to widen up the space for kids with interest for other kids with interest in supply chain management to also participate i mean uh, we which which I, it's time for um, pharmacy professionals. I mean, I'm speaking also to our colleagues that are participating from other parts of Africa and other parts of the world. It's a time for us to widen up the space. Let us not continue to close up the space within pharmacy professionals to say we are the only ones that have the right to participate in supply in health supply chain systems. No, we are not the only ones. We need to open up the space for people with interest. For example, laboratory people. I saw some. I saw a colleague from somewhere who has a background in laboratory um, um, logistics. They can also participate. Yeah, they can also provide that experience in their own way to ensure that we continue to strengthen our systems and build our supply chain system to, to be more efficient and robust. So ensure that all current efforts towards improving supply chain services are sustainable. We should not be focusing on knee jack or makeshift, makeshift types of system. Yeah, one of the reasons why we need the guiding policies and the strategies to ensure all efforts towards improving supply chain are, are, are guided by those documents. Yeah, and once they are guided by those documents, they will to start to have sustainability in our know, supply chain. Um, um, services that we provide. This is very key. Sustainability is very key. Let's just keep that at the back of our minds. Next slide, please. Now, in an at in an attempt to to speak to to what we to what we need to focus on to improve on career development in supply chain management, I also have hyped out very very key and interesting areas that I want to speak to that I want to speak to directly for my for our audience to understand as well. I mean, there is no way we'll be able to have um, people with interest in, in in any field or any area so far if there are not people up there that they look up to. Yeah, so we need to to have more, we need to have mentors, we need to have coaches, we need to have people that are there to guide the younger ones, the models, the role models, and guide them to ensure that they are able to develop their skills in terms of training, in terms of experience, or in whatever way to improve or build a career in supply chain system. How they can support this, 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 um, models and, and guide them. They can do so through enhancing their skills. This is what you do and this is what you should not do. Explain to them your experiences and see how they can build on those experiences to bring forth. Remember the very first um, slide when I, in my introduction and I, and I spoke about um, um, Steve's um, quotes, he specifically talked about mentors. Do not bring up your mentors to in your own image, no. You have to guide them so they can be themselves. Yeah, so as mentors, you should be there to guide them so they can enhance their skills in their way. They can develop certain talents and careers within the organizations that they work. And they are there to, to create a legacy, to be a living proof of legacy that they are leaving behind. That is how some of us have grown so far in supply chain management. Next slide, please. Now, 
sources of mentorship. Now, one one may want to wonder, we, we talk about about mentorship and coaching. I mean, you will say, I, I don't know how to how to locate or find a mentor. There are many ways you can you can locate or find a mentor within your own space. If you cannot do it on online or connect with somebody from outside, you could also possibly uh, probably work within your own space and see how you can attract people. Within your organizations, you can. Prior colleagues, colleagues that have experience, at least probably five, 10, 15 years of experience, uh, where like we saw in the pools, they are also very important. They have had some experience and exposure. Collaboratives within your own setting, your groups, for, for example, now we have other international organizations, IEPHL, for example, they also collaborate and create those kinds of groups for people to, 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 to provide mentorship to colleagues. Yeah, professional coaches, I just mentioned IEPHL, there are, there are a number of them. Professional organizations, MSH, GSI, UNICEF, WHO, they provide these trainings, they provide these courses. Join them and see how you can improve on our supply chain experience, group purchasing organizations, yeah? So these are the things, are the various sources where we can have mentorship um, um, to build on our career or to continue to develop our interest in supply chain management. Next slide, please. Now, um, I also want to touch on a very key area, which is developing curriculum. Um, <clears throat> this is very important, of course, if we want to um, ensure that we have programs or modules that guide in, um, um, developing um, interest in supply chain management, that should be curriculum, that, that should be this critical assessment, okay? Let's know what the issues are, what are the gaps, and that should be professional guidance. We need to guide these people as we develop this curriculum. They are probably get somebody from our side to help us in developing this curriculum, so the case may be that we can develop our curriculums. There should be cadence and commitments. People need to be committed to whatever they want to develop and how they want it to be developed, and there should be ongoing commit um, assessment as we continue to develop our curriculums or train people who should be able to continue to assess, look at new skills or new areas of development, and also provide those kinds of trainings. We also need to keep at the back of our minds the skills, technical skills versus soft skills. Technical skills refers to the use of equipment, software, machine, or some or, or things like that. And soft skills looks at your interrelationship with your colleagues. How do we balance these two during our curriculum development is also very key. Next slide, please. Now, um, my colleague, my the previous speaker already talked about organ, uh, talked about structures that we have within our country, NMSC, DPS, DPPI, the programs, as the case may be. Now, organizational optimization is very key in improving career pathways for 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 any program. Now we're speaking about supply chain management. If you could see in the very first, um, at the top, the very first organogram, you see, for example, this is the current state of a, of a particular organization. You see it's so crowded, everybody's reporting to the director. Would there be an efficiency? Would there be a career path? Would there be, would there be anything you will learn? That this would be overwhelming for the director himself. Yeah, but if you look at the proposed organogram at the, at, at the bottom, you would see that, um, that is a unit for strategic planning. They have everything properly arranged and, <clears throat> and a flow of work and activities around them. The procurement and operations department also, they have a flow of how things work, yeah? So they are very much focused on what they do, you understand, and you see the flow. And at, at the side of that, you see a very beautiful diagram in the form of a tree, how various positions, we, we report to a particular position, then those positions would, at, at the end of the day, report to the director. It gives a level of responsibility. It's also pro provide and it also provides an opportunity for people to be hopeful that I will grow within the organizations. For now, I'm in a very, I'm in that minimum management level, and I know there's a top management ahead of me. If I work hard, I would probably be promoted to top management. For example, next slide, please. Now, in all this, what do we do? What do we stand to benefit as a prospect? Now, we would, then we will have individuals with the right training and capacity development to deliver health supply chain services and are motivated and ready to work because they know what is there for them and when they start, what, what they stand to benefit. Available guiding documents, we can never go anywhere if we do not have these policies and strategies or other documents that should guide what we do. Are there strategies? We develop them. Are there HR documents? We develop them. We develop them. Are there policies? We develop them. Okay. Next slide, please. 
Now, improvement in staff with, with, uh, retention, especially for pharmacy professionals. This speaks to the HR policy that will be developed, that will be developed, that speaks to how we can retain staff to ensure that they continue to remain as supply chain staff as they move out along in that area. So we need government and Ministry of Health buy in in, in, in resulting that result in improving governance, sustainable investment, and donor attractions. Yeah, let's continue to build on those ones. Let's have what will guide us. Let's have the governance and buy-in from the government. That is the only way we can improve and have a very sustainable career pathway for supply chain system in general. So there should be a strong public health supply chain system institutions with the right infrastructure and HR mix. I mean, we could look at our organogram, how they are. Let's look at NMSA, let's look at DPS, let's look at DPPI, let's look at the programs, how are they structured, and let's see how we can actually work with them to to better improve on our organogram, to, prove, to widen up the space so other people, not only pharmacy professionals, can participate within this space. Now, I mean, in, in all this that we have said, <laughs> I want to finally take you through my, uh, my take home message. So given in today's volatile and disruptive environment, of course, that we, the, the, the probability of, of, of health emergencies we cannot ever set aside or overrule. Recently, we had and we had another mudslide uh, in Sierra Leone that killed up to seven or eight people. So these things happen from time to time and or in the ongoing um, unrest in certain parts of the world and stuff. So governments, MOHS, supply chain organization and stakeholders should be even more flexible and more focused on potential investment for more robust, resilient and sustainable supply chain system. Let's continue to let's continue to put together our efforts to ensure that we build a resilient and robust supply chain system. And in all this, we should be mindful that we are moving towards technology. Let's continue to invest in technology and have people that have interest in that and building on their careers. So I thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> And then um, that ends my presentation. Thank you very, very much for that. technology, open the space for more professional. Now, you uh, you said uh, your voice is not audible. Am I audible now? Okay, then perhaps I introduce myself and just go straight in because I think we're running in quite late already. Yes, Prof. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm Prof. Andy Barraclough with the Empower School of Health. I've been working in procurement and supply chain management healthcare for over thirty years, and I've worked in most of the countries who are attending here today. I was one of the co-authors of the Yellow Book, which many of you will know, the Managing Access to Managing Access to Medicines with MSH and WHO, and also Managing Medicines Handbook, the e-handbook, online handbook as well. Okay. Next slide, please. If we look overall at our healthcare procurement and supply management, it's failing to work. It is not happening. We're not meeting the sustainable development goals. It's so bad that the UN has estimated if we could just keep 13 critical medicines in stock all the time and actually deliver them, we could save 6 million lives. Because even 13 medicines, if we just could do that, well, why? Are we failing so badly to make our healthcare supply chain work? Next slide, please. Because we don't have enough people and we don't have people with the skills mix that are needed. Top right, you'll see the radar chart there of the skill plots. Those are all the skills that we need among procurement and supply chain professionals. And often they're not present and they're not strong enough in the people who are in position. We don't have enough people and we don't have enough skill sets amongst the people who are there. Next slide, please. The estimates from World Bank are that there are 30 to 70 percent vacancies around most of East Africa. It's around 30 percent vacancies. And even the people in position 
don't have the skills to undertake all of the PSM functions that are needed. Next slide, please. And Global Fund says it's even worse. They're saying in their areas, TB, malaria, HIV, it's 70% deficient. The staff don't have the skills. And when you've got underqualified and underskilled staff, you get poor management, insufficiently resourced, the health commodities don't reach the patient, and you get underperforming health programs. We can't meet the sustainable development goals because we're failing to deliver the medicines and to have them in place. Next slide, please. Well, why don't we have the human resources in procurement and supply chain? We've been running training courses for years. How is it that we don't have these skills now? And it's clear that that kind of training course, the one week when you bring international consultants and you all sit down in a classroom and go for it, have failed to produce. We haven't got national systems. All we've got is donors have come in and done short courses. And that's been helpful, it's been useful, but it's not solved the problem. It's not created a national system of procurement and supply chain skill development. All it's done is empower a few people. Next slide, please. Well, why is there no human resource capacity in this area? Because very few schools of pharmacy or nursing or medicine teach supply chain. There is an exception, and that is the Hanoi University of Pharmacy, because the Vietnam government insists every school of pharmacy must include supply chain in its curriculum. And very few schools of management teach public health. And in order to do healthcare supply chain, we need both functions. We need some medical information and we need some management information. And we have to marry the two together. We need skills development in those areas. Next slide, please. So what are the future prospects? Because I've painted a pretty bleak picture here of what's needed. Next slide, please. Uh, back, okay, right. First is to recognize who employs procurement and supply chain staff. Too often, there's this fixation on the Ministry of Health. Yet they certainly do employ people. But there's lots of other bodies as well. And people in the public sector are not looking at them. There's all the UN agencies. There is Comonix, MSH, UNAIDS, the Global Fund, lots of players in the field. And yet people don't go looking for jobs there. If we look at those areas, typically when a job comes up, there is around 100 applicants of which three might be qualified. Because we're not, people are not recognizing the diversity of public health supply chain and all the different players involved. Next slide, please. Well, are there really jobs? Just take a look at the UN jobs. Just go and look at the UN list, see what jobs are around. But to get those jobs, you have to be skilled and qualified. Just being a pharmacist or a nurse is not going to get you those jobs. Just having an MBA is not going to get you those jobs. You have to have qualifications and skill sets in procurement supply chain. Next slide, please. There are real opportunities, and most of the people working in the field, the young professionals, not white-haired old professors like me, the young professionals say, yeah, it was a good move. We enjoyed it. It worked well. It came out good for us. So there are real opportunities there. Next slide, please. But to get those, you need to have skill sets and recognize qualifications, and that's a problem because, frankly, there's a lot of rubbish out there. It's got to be quality PSM training focused on your environment, and that means low- and middle-income countries, focused on adult learning, 
and focused on your particular activities. Learning about the British Constitution might be very interesting, but it's of no use if you're operating supply chain in Africa. It's got to be appropriate and relevant to what you do. And that means having a competency tool. And we use the competency tool to assess and measure all activities in that. And a learning technique that works. And we use an adult learning technique called ADE. Analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Not just talk and chalk. That just puts people to sleep. You have to be able to motivate people to learn. Next slide, please. We use a blended learning technique. Yeah, it's online learning, but far too many people believe online learning is just taking 30 PowerPoint slides and sticking them on the internet and calling it online learning. That isn't online learning. It has to be a blended learning where there's some face-to-face -face interaction with colleagues. Of course, there's web-based learning, but there's micro-learning, there's labs, where you can do what-if scenarios. What if I did that? What would be the result? It's one way of learning. Adaptive assessments and even gamification. Yes, I had to learn that playing games will actually help you learn. It took me a long time to understand that, but it does happen. Playing the games and the what-if scenarios, what if we do this, helps people to learn. That's how you put the blended learning techniques together. Next slide, please. Well, what about the future? There's no point learning all this because we're all going to be replaced by robots and artificial intelligence and there won't be any jobs for supply chain staff. Drones will deliver everything and all the warehouse staff will be robots and machines. Nonsense. Absolute rubbish. Next slide, please. This statement is from Deloitte. That's the big accountancy consulting company. And what do they say about it? Supply chains, healthcare organizations are not achieving with technology. Technology can help, but technology alone will never fix the supply chain. That's not going to happen. You're not going to get replaced by robots or artificial intelligence. You have to analyze the root cause of the problems in the healthcare system. So here is a quote from Health Technology Magazine. They promote health technology. They're all for robots. They're all for artificial intelligence. And even they say tech itself is not the answer. It needs people, people first. And over on the right from William David Institute, Market Messen, new technologies will not solve the supply chain challenges. Stronger focus on capacity development. We need people, but we need people with skills. Next slide, please. Skills like data analytics, being able to analyze the data we get from the supply chain and predict and forecast the future supply. Lots available. It doesn't mean no staff. It doesn't mean computers are going to do it. It means staff with new skills. Always there will be the need for people in supply chain. Next slide, please. Healthcare PSM is for me an exciting and challenging area. I've done it all my life and it's still exciting and challenging. There are real opportunities. There are real jobs there. And COVID has highlighted the need that we must improve supply chain. And we improve it by having skilled staff. But to get those jobs, staff must be skilled. The future has got expanding opportunities in many aspects, but only for those staff who have skilled in PSM and modern technologies like data analytics. OK. That's my presentation. It's very fast because we're running rather late. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much for such a detailed and brief presentation. So we are now in our question and participants or 
put in your questions in the chat box. Um, for the few questions that has been received. Okay, perhaps yeah. I'll take, because we have four or five uh, questions about fee levels. So perhaps I can take that first, yeah? Yes. Okay, so okay. there's a group okay. of do. questions do. about fee levels. Okay, no, we can't yeah. do it any cheaper. Believe me, this is the lowest cost masters and other courses you're gonna get. The problem is not our fee levels. The problem is countries are not asking for funding. How many countries included procurement supply chain management training in their global fund grant application? And the answer is one, Tanzania. What about all the other countries? Nobody included it. They're not asking for the funding. How many countries asked UN agencies for funding for supply chain training? None. Countries are not asking. It's not the fee levels that are the problem. It's asking for the money that's the problem. And countries are not doing it. Global Fund will provide funds for procurement, supply chain management training. But you have to ask for it. We, as the university, cannot ask. That would be a conflict of interest. You, as potential students, have to get your countries to ask for the funding. That's how it works. There's lots of agencies that will fund if you ask them. And I think that's the key point around the fee levels. Ask for the funding. That's the major change which has to occur. Okay, back to you, Yusuf. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, our next question is, is Empower School included in the UNESCO all our education database. Not that I'm aware That's of one because of the questions we received from our right. participants. Okay. Not that I'm aware of because we are linked with UNITAR, the United Nations Training and Research Organization, and our master's degree is presented jointly with UNITAR. So rather than UNESCO, which is a rather general scientific one, we are linked specifically with training UNITAR. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm missing management. What do you think getting it analytics? Yusuf, we, we cannot, you are coming in broken. I think, I think your internet is, mm -hmm. is giving you some challenge. Um, but we are okay. almost. I get him in our player. You, okay. You're still coming in broken. <coughs> okay, then perhaps I'll try and read some questions mm -hmm. while Yusuf is uh, getting the is audio it? together there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, what? Okay, no. I get that, that's better. Okay, go ahead, Yusuf. Yeah, okay. Professor Andy, I would request you to please pick up the questions because I think Yusuf is raising some internet okay. issues. Okay, how do countries go about asking for funding? Well, every country submits a global fund grant. All you've got to do is add it into the global fund grant application. Every country submits one. You've probably got three grants, one for HIV, TB, and malaria. Include it in that. Ask the UN agencies when you submit your grant applications to the UN agencies. Lobby them. You can actually approach them yourself for funding. Okay. Uh, what have we got? Okay. Absorbing graduates okay. into supply chain management institutions. Uh, really. Supply chain management institutions want graduates. There are vacancies. They want people. They are looking for skilled people. But the point is skilled and qualified. Just having a pharmacy degree won't do it. Uh, I think we have about 20 requests to share the slides. Yes, we do. You'll get the link at the end of the presentation on where to get the slides. 
Our MSC program self-paced. Yes, you go through at your own pace within an overall time limit. Is there a scholarship program available? Yes, and you, <clears throat> we've already done scholarships, but they are available. But mainly countries need to ask for funding. <clears throat> Do you advise health supply in the B farm degree? No, I don't. The pharmacy degree is already overloaded. You can't want to add. And also, I'm not as active. Still, join MSc, PSM. Yeah, go ahead, Yusuf. I think we lost him there. Um, thank you very much. Okay, go ahead. I am. I think we, the professor, already highlighted the the need for government to continue pro to provide the governance, like I said in my presentation, and a responsibility to see how they can approach donors. The donors are there; they have the monies. The only all what they need is for people to be, to to convince them that this is what we want and this is how we want it. You understand? So things like that, global fund. There's a budget every year. Do we put that in our budgeting? Do we approach WHO? Do we approach UNICEF or other? You know, institutions that have interest in developing um, supply chain management and strengthening supply chain management in countries. So we need to continue to look forward to that, like continue to approach our decision makers and the ministries and the government and our institutions to see how we can further improve on this generally. Okay, I see we're out of time uh, on yes. Yes, yes, so yes. I, yeah, but I the, hand questions, back the over questions to you. keep the questions keep coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. So another yes. question. Can we still join the MSC procurement supply chain management for August? Uh I'll let uh, <laughs> I'll let the yes. admin team. Yes, yes, yes. Uh we are still taking enrollments to August session and next session is a September. That will be that is scheduled to start by end of the uh, September month. So for any queries, because we are already running out of time, it's better to wrap up the Q and A session now. Mm -hmm. And for any question, mm -hmm. uh, who ha those are left and those are unanswered, uh, that will be uh, uh, provided to the uh, uh, to the uh, participant on uh, through email. Now we will just move on to the next poll. That is poll two. Uh, back in team, please launch poll two, and I would request all participants to please participate in this poll as well. And in addition, uh, there is a certificate of participation that will be provided to all participants, and the link will be posted after this poll. So please fill up your respective form, and the certificate will be delivered to your registered email ID. So please participate in the poll, participants. I would request your participation. This is the last poll. And this is just a feedback poll. You can see if the first question is was what percentage of information was new to you? Uh, the second one after this webinar, would you like to enroll for uh, the courses offered by Power School of Health in collaboration with PSSL? Yes, because I can see uh, the most of the participants that we have today, uh, those are under or uh, those ha are having five years of experience. So it is high time to get enrolled yourself to our courses. You can try with PGD and short courses also. And once you complete PGD and you will move on to master's course. So the master's will be of 12 months instead of 24 months. Uh, this third question is how did this session compare to your expectation? I can see maximum percentage is going to excellent. Uh, but still we need to, uh, two person is fair. So I think we should improve on this. Uh, how likely are you recommend this session to a colleague? Uh, four to seven, eight to 10 is the maximum percentage. Still 54% of uh, participants have participated in this poll. I would request others to please participate. We will uh, wait for a few more seconds and then this poll will be closed. And we will, uh, Yusuf will uh, share the summary of the results to you all.
the link has been posted on the chat box please fill up your form also to download your certificate of participation for today's webinar and as informed by professor andy the slide deck the webinar recording link will be shared with you all who have attended today's webinar for your future references okay the poll will be closed in the next few seconds see percent of participants have already Team, please end the poll and show results to all. Yusuf, okay. over to you. So, so thank you, everyone. So we see 151 of the 208 participants um, took the poll. And so for what percentage of the information was new to you? We have 11 percent says um, totally new. 50% to 75% new, 59% um, of the participants responded that 50% to 75% of the information was totally new. And 30% of the participants reported that below 50% of the information um, was new. And after this webinar, would you like to enroll for courses offered by Empower School of Health and Collaboration with PSSL? 85% says yes, 4% says no, and 11% obviously others. So like, we'll hope in the future we'll convince um, more people to opt in for the course. And the third question, how did the session compare to your expectations? 62% says excellent, 36% of participants says good, and 2% responded that it was fair and obviously no one responded it was poor so that's a good one thank you and how likely are you to recommend this session to a colleague with 10 being most likely to recommend um 85 percent say yes 83 percent say within eight to ten and 15 percent between four to seven and two percent zero to three. So thank you everyone. This is a inciting um, feedback and challenges um, we gather from here will be corrected going forward. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Yusuf, uh, for your moderation for today's event. I would also would like to thank Professor Andy, Dr. Augustine, and Dr. Amala, Amara, and Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone for uh, their engagement towards us. And we will be organizing more we webinars in future, and that will be posted on the social media of Empower School of Health and Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone. So please do visit our website, our social media page for all recent updates uh, and also for any queries related to the courses for enrollments and for admission you can get connected with us on the posted email id that was uh, posted and also you can visit our website all the contact information is there itself thank you all for your time and for your patience yeah, thank you everyone hello sonia can you please give a few um minutes probably five minutes for colleagues to ensure that they I would sure, sure. Continue. We are waiting. We are waiting. I would request all to please uh, fill up your uh, your uh, form to download and to receive the certificate of participation. This sort of a part, uh, certificate will be provided to you along with your name on it. Uh, the link is put on the chat box and I'm putting again the link to the chat box.
Dr. Amara, if you have anything to say on the behalf of PSSL, please feel free to acknowledge. Yeah, we we want to continue to um, thank and power for her continued relationship. And they will definitely continue to engage and hold such webinars. I mean, I mean, for all the webinars that we have held, this one has been very much exciting and insightful. You could see from the from the responses that came through and the number of, of people that registered and the ones that registered were able to participate. It, it, it sends a lot of signal that um, we are gradually building on, on our relationship and strengthening it as we as we move forward. I specifically want to also thank um, Professor for his always very insightful uh, um, presentations. I mean, you, you, you cannot deny it that when Professor speaks, you will know that um, somebody who knows or understands the issues is speaking. And then um, also on behalf of um, the President, the National Executive, and the entire membership of the Pharmaceutical Society, I want to thank you for the continued collaboration. We continue to keep in touch on all our various platforms. And we also um, added the webinar link in our website. Um, so I, I'm sure a few other people um, joined through registrations in the in the link we shared in our website. Um, Austin, Augustine, Dr. Augustine Brahma and pharmacist Yusuf Mara, thank you very much for opting to participate in obvious positions in this in this webinar. Sonia, I mean, me and you have been in touch and um, always at, at night, during the day, every hour of the day, we have been in touch. So thank you very much for your continued efforts um, to continue to collaborate and set up these events. So um, we, I'll continue to reach out as we, as we continue to um, improve on our collaboration on behalf of the Pharmaceutical Society of Sierra Leone. Thank you. And I'm happy to see Professor Paul today. He had not been able to participate in, in the previous webinars, but he was here today um, to give the very, very, very initial and um, welcoming to all participants here. I'm, I'm happy that he joined. Um, we'll take the message back to the rest of the society oh, and its no, membership. And thank you very much again, Sona and no, the team. Yeah, thank you, Amara, for all your uh, cooperation to I, make I, I, these I, 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 events I, 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 successful. No, no, yeah, and obviously, uh, surely we will be having more events like this, more engagement in future. Uh, so we will be able to, uh, you know, uh, train and. Uh, able to help other uh, professionals also to you know keep them uh, boosted on their careers also and by up by coming up with new courses new topics new webinars so in, in anyhow we will able to you know um, do any sort of a participation to their career we we are happy to do so and uh, it's always a great help and it's always a great uh, to see when uh, in this webinar also, when people started join in the beginning, it was 200. And the best part is when we ended the uh, webinar, uh, the number of participants are nearby to 200 people. So I, exactly. I yeah, so it shows how uh, they, uh, the people are keen to take the uh, skills, knowledge from the experts, and we are also happy to do so. And yes, Professor Paul, it was all of the sudden uh, doesn't he doesn't have uh, I doesn't have his schedule for uh, to coming to the event, but somehow he came and it was a nice gesture. And obviously, we will be uh, doing such event in future also. Thank you, Amara. Thank you, everybody, for your participation and your time. Thank you. Thank you. And bye bye for my end. The link. Thank you and bye bye. Thank you and bye bye for my end. Bye bye.